Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, a very special welcome to you, especially if you're visiting uh, for the first time. Uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm Mark, the Families and Youth Minister. Uh, hopefully, you can see a screen where you are. Hopefully, you can hear me. Um, and uh, yeah, a very, a very special welcome. Uh, hopefully, you've had uh, some toast or something, uh, some fruit. Um, thanks to uh, David and Caroline for getting the, all that organized. Uh, just a few notices to start off with. Uh, for our regular church family members, we've got a Bible study group social this Wednesday. Details of that will be sent out in the next day or two, so um, watch out for your uh, email inbox there. Uh, we've got a monthly prayer meeting, central prayer meeting, a week on Wednesday, so just make a note of that. Um, and let's have our notice for our giving. Thank you, Lucy. So uh, this week we're thinking about harvest, uh, and we're going to focus more on the Anglican international development next week, but Lucy's got a notice if you're thinking about giving some money to AID. Thanks, Lucy. Hi, yeah, Anglican International Development have sent us some really nice um, brochures saying a little bit about the work that they do, and um, it details all that so you can see what the money uh, that we're raising goes towards. And then the practical bit of how to give it is on this um, bit of paper which is inside. You can either, for the one-off gifts, you can either do it online yourself so it's got the details of the website and it's no normal online payments. And then, if you prefer, you can do it by check. So you can write out a check and there's a free post envelope that you can use. So um, super easy. The bit to give even more generously is there's a bit about gift aid and a form on there to fill out, which I think you can either do online. But if not, just fill it out and we'll collect. We can either just pop them in this free post envelope and send it off, and that adds the 20% if you're eligible for it to be a gift aid giver. So all of the information for this little pack is, as we go out of the door here, just on the table on the left. We'll have it this week and next week. If anything's a bit complicated or unclear, just come and see me. I'm happy to help. Thank you. That's great. Thanks very much, Lucy. So that's our, uh, that's our, our kind of charity that we're going to give to this year, AID, and um, we've got, has anyone got any produce that they've brought along for the, to the service today? We're going to give this to the local food bank, to distribute, uh, distribute it locally. So if you'd like to take your produce up to the, the tree table, that'd be great. Um, you can either put it underneath the table, make sure it's tucked in, or you can put it on the table if it's, it can fit around the tree. So we'll do that. So thank you very much. Thanks, Ken. Seth and Lola, you've got you've got some. Well done. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, we're going to say a, a harvest, harvest prayer together. So Psalm 65, the psalmist writes, What a rich harvest your goodness provides. What a rich harvest your goodness provides. So I'm going to um, say a line of prayer, and then you can respond, if you'd like, with thanks be to God, okay? So shall we practice that? Thanks be to God. So I say a line, and then you say... Thanks be to God. Good, okay. For the seeds that grow into food crops. Thanks be to God. For the earth where these crops grow. Thanks be to God. For the rain which gently waters them. Thanks be to God. For the farmers that tend and harvest them. Thanks be to God. For the people who process and package our food. For the drivers who bring the food to our shops. Thanks be to God. For the shopkeepers who sell us the food. Thanks be to God. For those who buy and cook our food. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. But above all, for that first tiny seed. Thanks be to God. 
Amen. Well, uh, we've, uh, we're, we're in our kind of middle of our all-age service series. It's the fruit of the Spirit. We've been thinking about the fruit of the Spirit. And in our series on the fruit of the Spirit, we've been reminded that the Bible compares the things that we say and do to fruit, the things that we say and do to fruit. Just as you can tell a, a, a tree by its fruit, whether it's good or bad, so our fruit can show us, show people what's on the inside. As Christians, as we trust in Jesus, God the Holy Spirit grows good fruit in us, helping us to be more like Jesus. So we've got our uh, fruit of the Spirit uh, tree, and can I have some volunteers to hang the fruit on, please? Uh, that'd be great. If you want to come up and help me hang these fruit on. Any volunteers? Let's... No volunteers? Any adults? Adults can come and help me. These are wonderful fruits made by Helen and Derek. Derek did one of them. Okay, yeah, thanks, uh, Luke. So we'll just hang them on. Anyone else? Yeah, come on. That's it. Well done. Do you want to stick, hang that one on? Do you want to hang that one on? Okay, well done. Here we go. They're kind of spinning around, but you can, the tree looks better with them on, doesn't it? Yeah? So we had love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and today, thank you very much. Oh, you're going you're gonna to stick the one on today. Fantastic. That hasn't got a label on it yet. Can you reach? Do you want me to pick you up? There we go. You're very light, Seth. Well done. Thank you very much, Seth. Okay. Okay, so our fruit for today is faithfulness. Faithfulness. Has anyone got any ideas what faithfulness is all about? Hands up. Any ideas? If you're full of faithfulness, then what, what do you have? Gordon? Um, lots, of love. lots of love? Any other ideas? Loyalty. Loyalty. Thank you. Lucy Brown? Keeping promises. Keeping promises. Thank you. Good. So yes, so today we're thinking about faithfulness, and it's exactly that. Someone who is full of, uh, who has got faithfulness, they're steady, aren't they? They're reliable. They're trustworthy. Yeah? They keep their promises. So, now in your, in your table activity, you were starting to think about that. There was a challenge about raising a Bible up onto a platform using just one sheet of A4 paper. Now, did anyone, I can see that this table over here have managed this challenge, but did anyone have a go of the Bible raising challenge? Is there any, any other ones? No? Okay. Well, have a look at that. Using only one sheet of paper, the challenge was to raise the Bible up at least five centimeters. I think you're at 15. That is very good. Is it stable? Yeah? You're going to shake your table? Now, I was, that is very impressive for height, but I was actually hoping that someone was going to build a stable platform. I'm just going to show you because I know you're all interested in how do you make a stable platform, Mark, for a Bible out of a single sheet of paper. Well, what you do is you cut a sheet of paper in half, long ways, and then you roll it, roll each half up, and then you stick them together to form an eight. You put that on the table, and then your Bible can go on there. Okay, I'll demonstrate that on this table. Here we go. Nice and stable, yeah? Okay. 
Well, you can make it better than I could, but that's the general idea, okay? Nice and stable. Are we stable people? Reliable, trustworthy. Okay, we're going to sing a couple of songs now. Uh, the first one is going to be Thank You, Lord. And we're going to thank God for all His gifts, for loving us, food to eat. You can stay seated if you'd like to, to prefer, if you prefer stay seated, you, but uh, you can stand as well. So let's stand and sing Thank You, Lord, for and Jesus Strong and Kind, which was the video playing before the service. So let's stand. So Jesus Strong and Kind, this is a new song. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just play through a, a verse, the first verse in the chorus, and then we'll stop and we'll start again. Okay, just to give you an idea of how it goes. <coughs> back to verse 1. Strength. 
Please sit down. Now, I thought we'd play a little game just to see, see if we, uh, we've got faithfulness in going the distance with the game. So the game is, it's fairly straightforward. We've done this before, I think. It's wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, you love this one, don't you? You've got to count a minute in your head. And, you know, you've got to keep going because some people around you might be a bit distracting, yeah? And then when you've uh, counted, when you've got to a minute, you put your hand up, or you could stand up if you wanted. Just let me know. Wave at me, yeah? So we're all ready. We're all ready to go the distance, to be faithful in counting 60 seconds, yeah? Okay, we're going to start now. And don't let me put you off at all, because I would hate to do something like that. You know, I would really hate to, so, are you on 20 yet? 20? Maybe, I don't know if you're at 20 yet. Was it 25? Maybe it was 26. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Fifty-five. Fifty-six. Wow. Okay. Thank you, everyone. There was about four of you that were within two seconds, and they were around here. There was two around here. I think David and Caroline were, and someone else on this table. So this table came up very, very quick, very good on that one. It's hard, isn't it? Some of you were well early. Some of you were like 20 seconds early. It was classic. I hope I didn't put you off on that one. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, well, it's hard to keep going the distance when there's distractions, isn't there? Now, I have got, uh, I've got some bits over here. I'm sorry for those on the live stream who are not really going to see much of this, but hopefully you'll hear me, okay? So I'm going to move around here. Does everyone see me here? Most people. Hello. Nice to see you. I was actually thinking about leading the whole service from this angle, but I don't know. It might have upset, it might have upset you. So anyway, here we go. Have you ever made a promise to any, anyone 
and then broken it? Hands up. Have you ever made a promise and then broken it? There's a few hands going up in church. There's a few hands. Thank you very much. The following situations... Actually, wait a minute. We, we need to remember that faithfulness, okay, is being trustworthy, true to someone, being reliable, yeah? So how reliable, how trustworthy, how faithful do you rate yourself on a one to ten? You don't have to sort of shout your answers out, but have a think about it. Do you think people consider you a trustworthy, faithful person, dependable? Well, I won't go around and ask your scores, and we won't get your neighbor to to rate you on that either, will we? You could describe it as going the distance. We thought about that in our game, didn't we? Some people find it easier than others to be faithful in certain areas of life, don't we? We all have our strengths. We have our weaknesses. Some people might find keeping appointments easy, but struggle in other ways. So I've got some examples here of things which need faithfulness. And uh, to represent us as humans, I've got some thread hanging here. You probably can't see it because it's just thread, isn't it? But I've got four bits of thread, okay? And this represents us in terms of our faithfulness, okay? So, now like I said, some people will be pretty good at some of these things and some other, others won't be, okay? So we've got trustworthy. Are you considered by your friends and family? Apologies if this snaps and falls on you, okay? <laughs> Are you considered a trustworthy person? Is your faithfulness visible to all? What's the next one? Keeping promises. Keeping promises. I'll stick this one up here. Are you good at keeping promises? Where's the thread? I can't even see it. Keeping promises. Do you always keep your promises? I wonder. I've promised loads of times to tidy my study. <laughs> it's the longest tidying session in the history of mankind. <laughs> I'm going to keep that promise. It's just taken a lot longer than it should. Um, being reliable. Being reliable. Are you on time? How are you, how are you good? Are you good at being on time? Let's put this one up here. Being reliable. See that? Being reliable. You, you on time? You on time? Yeah? Punctual? People can depend on you if you, they give you a job to do. You know, if you've got to lead the prayers at church one Sunday, do you forget about it? Let's hope not. Okay, going the distance. Have you ever quit a sport or a musical instrument because you can't go the distance? I've done that. I tried to learn guitar. I want it to be like a guitarist to do some shredding, you know. But I couldn't really get the finger. The finger's working. So... I bailed out. My faithfulness, I needed more faithfulness in practice with the guitar, okay? Um, or a sport. Maybe you're like that with a sport. Maybe you bail out. What about being loyal? Being loyal. Do people consider you a loyal person in the workplace? Are you a loyal person in the workplace if you've got a job? Where am I going to put this one? I don't really want it to fall on your head here, okay? I'm being considerate. Being loyal. Are you a loyal work colleague? Are you a loyal family member? A loyal friend? How about... If we say that we're Christians, how about faithfulness in prayer? How about our relationship with God? This is just one example, isn't it? How about our relationship with God? Are we faithful in prayer? Are we putting God first? 
How do we stack up, people? I tell you what, I think. I think, I think we're not very good at these things at all. I think, I think we're quite weak. And our faithfulness... Sorry if I took anyone out with a thread there. I think our faithfulness needs a lot of improvement. I'm covered in thread now, but that's fun. Yeah? We're not 100% faithful. We let people down. We're like a thread. Can we relate to that? So just now, we're going to move straight on to a time of saying sorry to God. Okay? So the words should be on screen, okay? So we'll just have a moment of quiet to bring before God the things that we've been unfaithful with, and then we'll say this prayer together. So just a couple of moments in silence. So together, dear Heavenly Father, we are sorry that we have sinned against you. We have said, thought, and done lots of things that are wrong. We have not done many of the good things we should have done. Thank you that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Please forgive us and help us to be more like Jesus every day. Amen. Well, we're going to sing again, Who Put the Colors in the Rainbow? Now, sorry, sorry, band, I didn't really give you any notice about that one. So, um, Who Put the Colors in the Rainbow? Let's stand. Did you want to give out the instrument? No. Who put the colors in the Thank you. Please sit down. Sorry about the uh, slight word mix up there. We got, that was a good one though, isn't it? Okay. Now. Mike, can we have uh, that verse up, please? Thanks. This is a verse from the Old Testament on the screen from Deuteronomy. It says, know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. We thought about our faithfulness, or lack of it, didn't we? Our faithfulness is like a thread. We are not 100% faithful all of the time. But God 
He is 100% faithful. So like I said, our uh, faithfulness was represented by a thread. God's faithfulness is going to be represented by this rope. Thank you, Emma. (laughs) Emma was really faithful on our timing there. (laughs) That was a good one, wasn't it? (laughs) I thought you'd like that one. Yes, I know I'm not faithful cleaning my study. Okay, let's hope we don't pull the church down. Do you think we're going to pull the church down, everyone? Do you think if I pull really hard, then that pillar will actually collapse? That'd be fun, wouldn't it? That'd be memorable. Oh, we had a great time at church today. It was totally demolished. Just so you know, this rope is rated at a ton. Okay? Okay. Thank you, Emma. God is trustworthy. He doesn't change. We can count on God to be the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah? Totally trustworthy. God keeps his promises. Now, the thing is, I've thrown all my signs about. Oh, thank you. Cheers. God keeps his promises. Solid. Yeah? God is faithful to all his promises we read about in the Bible. We don't have time to go through them all just now. But this is what we remind ourselves from week to week, isn't it? On Sundays and at our midweek groups, that God is faithful. Because he has been faithful in everything that he has promised, we can be certain that he will be faithful in the things that haven't happened to us yet. For example, like getting to heaven and being with him forever through the Lord Jesus. God keeps his promises. Being reliable. I've got that one here. I didn't throw that very far. Being reliable. This one is uh, particularly underlined today. um, As we remember God's faithfulness in his creation. Yeah? Yeah? He sustains the world and everything in it. It's solid. The psalmist writes, the Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. He keeps creation going. He's reliable. Loyal. Has anyone got a loyal? Thank you, Richard. Cheers. God is 100% loyal. No one could be more loyal than God. Again, the psalmist writes, he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. God's going to look after you. He's totally loyal. He's the most loyal friend you could have. Going the distance. How many have I got? I've got two on each side, haven't I? I need to put another one here. Going the distance. God goes the distance. God's faithfulness goes the distance. Jesus went the distance when he went to the cross for us. Even though he was innocent, he was arrested and nailed to a cross. On that cross, he took punishment for our sins. He didn't bail out. He didn't give up. He didn't summon an army of angels to come to his aid. He was faithful to the very end, until the task of saving us was finished. God goes the distance. Prayer. We're over here again, last one. 
I need to space these out a bit, don't I? Prayer. The writer of Hebrews says something amazing. Because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Okay, that's a complicated word. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Jesus always prays for us. Jesus was and is always faithful in prayer. We, on the other hand, fail to pray often, don't we? Jesus always prays for us. So God is faithful. And God calls us to be faithful too. He calls us to grow in faithfulness in these things, to reflect His character in our everyday lives. As with all the fruit of the Spirit, as we fix our eyes on Jesus, He grows these qualities deep in our hearts, doesn't He? Wouldn't it be amazing if people witnessed our growth in faithfulness? Wouldn't that be amazing? If people are kind of watching us, watching what we're doing, and they witnessed a growth in faithfulness. As we follow Jesus, they see us more faithful, more trustworthy in character, more faithful sons, more faithful daughters, more trustworthy work colleagues, more loyal friends. Let's shine so that God may get the glory. Let's have a few moments of quiet, and then I'll lead us in prayer. Thanks, Mike. So we're going to pray together. I'm going to lead by saying the words in italic, and then you can respond with help us to keep on praying. Are we ready? I'm going to ask for God's help. Lord God, when the going gets tough, help us to keep on praying. When we're happy and thankful, When we're sad and worried. Help us to keep on praying. When we've done something wrong. Help us to keep on praying. When we see others in need. Help us to keep on praying. Night and day, rain or shine. Help us to keep on praying. And let's say the family prayer that Jesus taught us together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let's continue uh, in song, our final song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Let's stand.
please sit down for our final prayer. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Father, pray that uh, you would help us to grow in faithfulness. Thank you that you are a faithful God. Now to him who is able to protect you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory without blemish and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time, now and forever. Amen. 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 Well, uh, good to see you. Um, do, there's refreshments again. So you get refreshments before and after on first Sundays. So do help yourself. Uh, feel free to come back to your tables and uh, have a bit of a chit-chat. And... Uh, hopefully see you next time. We have got a family event coming up. I forgot to mention that. We've got a family event on a Saturday. We're going to start Super Saturdays. Uh, So that's going to be in a couple of weeks' time, but I'll uh, send out more details uh, in the next week. Thank you.